begin uh, to talk about uh, osmometry and specifically membrane osmometry. So this is kind of again in this series of lectures where we're going to be learning about um, experimental techniques to kind of measure critical properties of polymeric materials. So last time you were able to kind of measure specific viscosity, uh, intrinsic viscosity, and get that mark cooling equation where you have this relationship between intrinsic viscosity and our solvent quality A, and you can kind of uh, create a plot and see that relationship. So uh, with membrane osmometry, we're going to be actually able to uh, gather a little bit more information as well. So we're going to try to figure out uh, how we could measure our number average molecular weight uh, and our chi parameter in a single plot, just like uh, in a similar way that we did for intrinsic viscosity. So uh, that's what we're going to be kind of discussing in this series of videos. So again, our goal is to kind of measure unique properties of polymeric materials we kind of discussed last time. Uh, and now we want to look at... Uh, one of the ways that we could kind of do that again and to measure some of those properties is by looking and understanding this origin of osmotic pressure in polymer solutions and then relate that to molecular size and polymer polymer interactions and specifically again this chi 1 2 parameter. So uh, that's going to be our goal uh, in this uh, kind of description of this experimental technique. And that's how you actually measure it again as real life, you know, scientist, engineer, polymer physicist, soft matter expert. So uh, we just kind of talked about we could use intrinsic viscosity measurements to get uh, molecular weight, solvent qualities via A or alpha, uh, but we can get even more insight uh, by using uh, a technique called membrane osmometry, uh, which measures the osmotic pressure of a polymeric solution. So uh, hopefully you kind of know if I have basically a cell uh, and there's kind of lots of you know, salt or, you know, electrolytes or different kind of, you know, things in my cell. If I put it my cell in a pure, uh, basically, if I have a pure water solution here, it's going to rush in. Again, it's kind of this kinetic, you know, argument. Uh, and basically, again, we mix, uh, water flows in, or this kind of, uh, if you don't have any electrolytes, these electrolytes flow out, water flows in. Again, you have this kind of mixing effect effectively. So osmotic pressure is, uh, will occur for different systems. Uh, yep. So... Just a background, uh, it's a horrible example of uh, osmotic pressure. One of the key things, well, actually, we'll do that a little bit later on in our mechanics section. We'll actually look at a scenario of basically a virus. Uh, and a virus is put in initially, uh, basically what we have here, you could do my drawing of a virus. <laughs> horrible drawing. But your virus is made up of a capsid. It has DNA that instant that already wants to kind of push out. If I put it in, uh, if I kind of remove this capsule and put it in DI water, deionized water, so again, there's kind of things in here, charges, deionized water rushes in and it inflates, essentially to increase your pressure here. So again, that's kind of an idea of osmotic pressure. Uh, but we'll see an example of how we actually do that uh, for, again, it wants to mix in order to increase kind of that, uh, this thermodynamic driving force. Anyways, osmotic pressure, or pi, is a colligative property. This means it depends only on the number of solid molecules in solution. So it does not depend on the chemi uh, chemical composition of solid molecules. So just if you hear this term, uh, colligative, uh, again, number of solute molecules, not on the chemical composition. So what does that mean? Um, osmotic pressure is essentially, it's this thermodynamic driving force that arises when species mix uh, and the solution tends to maximize entropy via dilution with the solvent. Again, so species mix uh, to maximize entropy and then you dilute with that solvent. Same thing, you know, so this is the, uh, the kind of fundamental idea of osmotic pressure, and we're going to see that when we have an example uh, in just a second. Um, typically, you measure, uh, osmo you know, osmotic pressure with an osmometer. Uh, <laughs> uh, it seems pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, it has two separate containers, and we're going to see kind of an example of this uh, osmometer and this experimental setup right now. So one side of that container has the solvent, uh, and the other has the solute. So the two can the containers are separated by the semipermeable membrane. So only the small solvent molecules can cross. The polymer, which in this case, solute molecules cannot cross. So what happens when I put a polymer solute on one side uh, and then a pure solvent on the other side? So let's look at my picture right here. So this is my initial state. So I've got my polymer here on the left. My polymer is my solute. My pure solvent is on the right. Semipermeable membrane where only solvent molecules can uh, pass. So what do we think uh, is going to kind of happen here? And I'm going to uh, write this as our, basically, the solvent alone, this zero state, and this is my one state. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, again, 
uh, solute molecules can't pa pass across this membrane. So to maximize, again, my configurational entropy states uh, and to increase the entropy of my system, my solvent here is going to move to the left. It's going to cross this membrane because it wants to mix and maximize its entropic states with, uh, this, with the solute molecules, with my polymer. So let's go back to our description. Uh, so that's exactly what's going to happen. So when you put a polymer on one side, the solvent is going to flow uh, from the pure solvent side to the polymer side until you reach the state of, again, equilibrium. So when my delta G is equal to zero, or my D delta G with respect to some variable, uh, or effectively when my chemical equilibrium, so we know from our lecture four that when I'm in equilibrium, my chemical potentials of my side zero side is equal to my chemical potential on my side one side. So until this thermodynamic equilibrium has been achieved. So driving force again comes from mixing. So we want to increase the entropy of our system, the number of microfates or configurations. So again, this is my delta S configurational. That kind of comes from your delta S of mixing effectively. Uh, so we want to increase our number of microstates, uh, because of the polymer and the solvent, uh, uh, the number of solvents increases the micro, uh, the microstates of the polymer and the solvent increase as opposed to the pure solvent uh, polymer solution. So again, it's, uh, it's favorable. Our delta S increases as uh, we mix this kind of solvent and polymer. So again, it's very similar to the scenario of, you know, you have two, you know, like we kind of did for lecture four. You have this semi-permeable membrane. You have, you know, particle size, particle size up here and here, and then, you know, here and here and here. What's going to happen when you kind of let these uh, materials mix? It's going to flow over to this side because, again, we want to uh, maximize the configurational entropy states of our system. So number of microstates uh, of the polymer and solvent will increase as opposed to just the pure, uh, pure solvent and the pure polymer or the pure solvent and the pure polymer solution. So uh, so the flow of the solvent will also increase the volume of my system, uh, which is also going to increase my number of microstates as well. So this is a unique system. Previously, we've kept kind of volume constant, but now you're going to see that as the um, as we flow, as our solvent flows to this side, you can kind of see this change, uh, the change in height of my, that's measured by the osmometer. So initially, volumes are equal. As pure solvent goes over here, we have a change in volume, larger volume, larger number of microstates, more mixing here, more and more microstates. So that's this kind of, again, this thermodynamic driving force that we've been talking about, you know, over and over and over and over again. So it's due to this osmotic pressure, which pushes the solvent through the membrane. Uh, and you can kind of see if more solvents kind of uh, increase in entering here, our solution is becoming even more dilute. So in that initial solution of polymer and solvent mixture. So uh, that is ex exactly. So the flow of solvents going to give you that increase in volume. Um, so you're going to see the solution uh, basically sample or, you know, that kind of solvent raise up in that vertical tube. Um, that motion, in the vertical direction is going to be opposed by gravity. So we're going to have a mechanical pressure that's going to oppose that osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure, I is going to want to push it up. Uh, there's going to be some driving force and due to gravity that's going to push it down. So at equilibrium is going to be when this mechanical pressure due to gravity is going to be equal to that osmotic pressure right here. So uh, once we have that, uh, once we reach that thermal equilibrium, once basically we stop moving, once we've reached that, whatever that volume uh, is going to be, we can measure that osmotic pressure by via the high, uh, final height of the solution. Uh, and then we could calculate mechanical pressure and thus our osmotic. That is gonna be kind of what we're gonna utilize. We're gonna utilize these kind of principles of thermodynamic, this thermodynamic driving force, this mechanical pressure, this osmotic pressure in order to kind of, again, determine a fundamental equation that's gonna allow us to measure some properties and uh, things uh, and get some cool parameters. Specifically, again, we're trying to measure Mn and Pi. So, uh, next time we're going to go into a little more derivations and uh, we'll continue on our discussion of memory osmometry. Thanks, and let me know if you have any questions. See you next time. Bye.